Time for a lens review. What lens do I have in this case? The 200 f2 VR2. And in this video, I am about to review it. You guys ready? I'm ready. I'm very excited because this is one of my favorite lenses of all time. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cover. Rock and roll. What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. This is one of my all time favorite lenses. Why? You're about to see why. And this thing, this case right here, this is the case that the lens comes with. Don't lose it because it, it, it is expensive. The case that is. And the lens, we'll go over the pricing in a minute, but let's take out the lens. Comes with a really nice case, as you see here. There it is, guys. And by the way, guys, this is a very nice padded case. It's got a strap, it says Nikon on it. Very good quality. I love it. Perfect. All right, well, this is the lens. It is not a light lens, let me tell you. So, this is basically lens cap that it comes with. Take it out like that. There we go. This right here is a Nikon lens cap. It's made of a nice material and it comes with the lens. Don't lose it. And another piece you don't want to lose is the lens hood. <laughs> this is the lens hood. Doesn't that look gorgeous, guys? Doesn't this lens look amazing? It's quite heavy. I'll go over all the detail specs in a minute. However, it's a solid piece of engineering. One of my, if not my favorite lens, Nikon lens of all time. Someone asked me what lens you want to keep. Someone came over and said, you know what? One lens, one lens only from my collection, probably be this one. I love the images this thing renders. I will talk about this lens all day if I could. This is a rock and roll lens. Like I said, it's built very well. It's got a focus ring. I don't know if you could see that, guys. Yeah, let's go show you guys in that camera. Is that better? <laughs> this is a workout, guys. This is a workout. It's heavy. There is two versions of this lens, autofocus versions of this lens. The Nikon 200 VR1 with the red VR badging. This is the VR2. It has the gold badging. It has nano crystal coat. There's a few other features which I'll go over the differences of the two lenses. The VR2 is the latest Nikon 200 millimeter to date. This lens came out in 2010, September of 2010. The ultimate portrait lens. People, guys talk about the 105.14e, which is an amazing lens. More on that in a minute. However, this thing is king. I don't care what anyone says. This lens is king when it comes to portraits. It's a 200 fixed at f2. Buttery, buttery bokeh. You'll be surprised at what this lens can do. I mean, this thing's been out for over a decade now. This version here. Nothing bad. 
to say about this lens at all, except probably the price. Now this thing would sell brand new, I remember, for north of $6,000. You got me right, $6,000. You could find one used, it's hard to find though, very hard to find. These, this lens is a gem all around. Wherever you look, if you do find one, most probably you will find the VR1 version for sale. But if you do find a VR2 like this one, make sure it's in good condition. The reason why I say this is because, like I said, this is a heavy lens and it's easy to drop. If someone's not careful with what they're doing, you got a beginner or somebody that's a student, you know, you never know who handles equipment. But if you have a beginner or if you, you just make a mistake and you just drop it and make sure there's no hit marks, dents, cracks when you're inspecting this lens. It is not a Z lens. This is an F mount lens, obviously. This is one of the three lenses I will not part with when using mirrorless, transitioning to mirrorless. Now, when I get the Nikon Z9, I will keep this lens along with my 400G and my 105E. Those are the three lenses I will not touch ever. Ever, I don't care what Nikon comes out with. As you can see, the front element is very nice. And this is like a dumbbell. You can do like some nice curls. <laughs> it's got a few switches here on the side. Focus modes, uh, the focus range, VR selection, and a few other things here. Nano crystal coat. Look at the badging on the side here. This you will not find on a VR1 lens. This, this nice bling bling badge badge here on the side now you could add drop-in filters to this it takes 52 millimeter drop-in and all you got to do is just turn this to the side and just take the filter out like this you could screw the filter off it comes with a 52 millimeter filter nikon says it's part of their lens element so you need to leave it on and, but you can replace it. You can buy NDs. You can buy uh, polarizers. I, I'm thinking I'm going to get an ND filter because I want to do some outdoor video clips with this lens right here. At F2, can you imagine what kind of video background blur you can get on a bright sunny day if you, get, if you have the right filter without stopping down, you know, without hiring the shutter speed and the video looks jittery, stopping it down? No, I want to shoot this at F2. You buy this lens... To shoot it at f2 it's built solid it's built very very well it's got a it's got a vr on off switch it has a memory set button where you just you can set your memories memory and then you know use the buttons here on this on the top of the lens now the lens hood you do not want to lose this piece it's going to cost you some money to replace this is the nikon hk 31 if you're curious to see what it looks like when it's mounted to the lens all you do is just place it there and then tighten the screw here there it is guys lens and hood combination right here this lens gets compared often with the 105 14e lens another amazing piece of glass we will compare both lenses and i will show you the differences between the background blurs now again, the 200F2 and the 105E get compared a lot. And in case you were wondering how the big boys stack up to a less expensive camera combination, in this review exclusively, I like doing weird things. If you haven't noticed some of my reviews, I put up odd challenges, equipment against each other. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. But to some, it does. So what I'm trying to say... I'll put the big boys up against a much more less expensive combination. The 200 F2, the 105 14E. I have a Viltrox lens with me. It's an APS-C 56 millimeter lens. The Nikon Z50 camera will take a few pictures with the full frame with this beast of a professional setup, comparing it to an APS-C portrait setup. So we're going to have some fun, basically. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do all kinds of things here on this review. All right. First up, the detailed specs, of course. Detailed specs. 
of the Nikon 200F2 VR2 beautiful, beautiful lens. Detail specs right now. The number one question photographers ask themselves regarding the 200 millimeter f2 lens is why would I pay five or six thousand dollars for a 200 millimeter if I already have a 7200 and it could shoot 200 millimeter it's really heavy it's fat it's hard to carry around am I crazy why in the world would I spend five or six thousand dollars for a two-stop difference in light? Why you ask yourself? I'll tell you why. If you have the money, it is night and day. I will show you in this review why this lens is worth the money and is a big deal. The images it renders, the autofocus speed, the accuracy, the colors, the sharpness, all that and more this lens is a beauty is world renowned as being one of the greatest nikon lenses of all time if you're switching to mirrorless or if you've already switched let me tell you this lens works wonders on a mirrorless camera with the ftz adapter this is one of the few lenses that works like a charm with the z9 or z6 z7 II. this is the go-to lens if you need more light to go into your sensor, indoor sports, the ultimate isolation of subject, beautiful bokeh, you name it, this lens does it. Yes, it was sad to see Nikon stop production on this lens in 2020. And by the way, there is no equivalent Z-mount lens out there. Why don't we go outside and do some sample images? Like I said, the 105E comparing it to the 200F2. Well, here it is, guys. The 200F2, the 105E. We're gonna take some stills. The bad boy right here, the bad boy. Let's shoot it. In these sample images, these are straight from the camera. I'm using a Nikon Z6. I'm shooting raw, no editing, no processing whatsoever. Now, why am I comparing the 105 to the 200 F2? Well, I was very curious in finding out what lens is the king of bokeh. I wanted to see the sharpness. I wanted to see the colors. These two lenses are top notch in the Nikon world. Look at this. Look at these results here side by side. Wow. Gotta be careful to put it down nicely. All right, let's set this thing up. F2. You guys think this is a monster? Try holding that one for a while, and then you hold this one. And this, is, this thing looks like this thing feels like a small lens compared to that. Wow, what a difference! All right, let's go. This next example, both lenses shot at f/2. I have one at 2.8 here, side by side. If you're wondering what the 1/4e lens looks like wide open compared to the 200 f/2 wide open, well, here you go. Let's zoom into the image heavily. Both shot at 2.8. Let's see the sharpness. Now let's back it up. The same image, full frame. Now it makes a big difference being that the 200, you need to back away from the subject in order to correctly frame what the 105 captures. However, I just wanted you guys to see the difference of both lenses shooting approximately the same thing. Look at these, all these images shot at F2 with the 200. Let me know in the comments what you think. What do you think, guys? Didn't I tell you how special this lens is? Did you see the buttery bokeh? Wow, guys, I'm very, very excited to own this lens. If you could find one used, jump on it. I didn't forget about the Viltrox comparison. Let me go grab my uh, Z50. So let's do that right now. All right, guys, for this part of the review, it's time to shoot some actual portraits now. I have my daughter with me, Ani. We'll take some portraits of her with the 200 F2, the 105E, and the Viltrox. Rock. There you go, honey. Yeah, there you go. Smile. All right. I haven't forgotten the Viltrox. Now, in case you're wondering what these lenses can do on a DSLR, I'm using my Nikon 
D800 on the full frame lenses and the Z50 with the Viltrox. Now I'm getting some interesting results with the Z50. I have all cameras set on standard picture profile. Now these are JPEGs straight out of the camera, no processing. I want you to take a look at these results here. All three lenses shot at f2. The 200 millimeter is blowing everyone's doors off as far as background blur. So if you're wondering if your APS-C 56 millimeter with your crop sensor camera is good enough for background blur on portraits, well, you can see the difference with full frame and longer lenses. Now take a look at these images coming up. I'm scaling these images you see on the screen 500% side by side and we could see the differences. Look at these results on the eyes. Wow, 200 F2 is amazing. There we go. Chin up a little bit, chin up. This is such a joy to use. Yes, like I said, this lens is heavy. However, it delivers results. The subject isolation is superb. The background blur, the sharpness, the colors, and the depth of the images this lens produces. My favorite part of the review always is video clips. Let's go, let's shoot some video, and let's see the differences. Let's see what this thing could do with video. Excited to show you video now. The Nikon Z6 200 F2 FTZ adapter video clips. All right, let's go. The 105 with the FTZ and the Viltrox. Let's rock and roll. All right, first up in this video clip test, we have the 105E 1.4 lens, wide open at 1.4. Nice setting, nice setup. Let's say you're doing a cooking channel or whatnot. I have the camera a good, I'd say 30 feet away from me. Background blur, a 1.4 with a 105E lens, gorgeous lens. We are gonna put the 200 on in a minute. But first, let's shoot the same clip with the Viltrox lens, wide open, APS-C. I'll switch the camera to APS-C mode, see if we see a difference with a less expensive lens. These are premium lenses, the 105 and the 200. These are top quality, professional, top upper echelon lenses. Now let's see what it looks like with the Viltrox, a much more affordable consumer slash semi-pro lens wide open as well now this is the viltrox now the viltrox lens that i'm using is an aps-c lens remember 56 millimeter aps-c on a dx is around 70 to 80 millimeter equivalent so what i did was i brought the tripod in a little closer i would say about six feet closer to me shooting it wide open at 1.4. So how does it look? Wide open, Viltrox, 1.4. This lens is what, $250? 1, 1.4 Viltrox, I'm recording it on a Z6. The Z6 automatically switched to DX mode. So shooting at DX mode. I say, let's slap on the guest of honor. Why this video is being made. You wanna see the 200 F2? Let's check it out. Well, here it is, guys, the Nikon 200 F2 at F2. How's it looking? This is a 200 millimeter, and I took the camera and tripod as far back as I could go. It's probably about 50, 45 feet distance from me. Now, it's at F2. What I did was I busted up the ISO to 250 to compensate for the aperture. The previous clips were shot at 100 ISO. So let's do side by side split screen so you can see the differences shot wide open all three lenses. What do you guys see? Difference in quality, background blur? Let me know in the comments section what you guys think of this segment of the review. Now I want you to take a look at the quality of the bokeh in the back, amazing. The sharpness, take a look at the sharpness. The 200 F2 does a really fine job. What I noticed is, even on a Z6, the autofocus is very, 
very snappy. It's sensitive. It tracks. It's just great when doing video. Like, this is why you pay the big bucks for this piece of glass. But the true magic of the 200 F2 comes out when you bring the camera a little closer. It just disintegrates the backdrop. This is why this lens is worth the big bucks and it's one of my favorite Nikkor Nikon lenses of all time. Take a look at this apple again. Want to do something fun? Let's bring in back the 105E. Here we go. The 105E at 1.4 wide open. Now two different types of lenses. Of course, you're talking about a 200 and a 105. Almost double the focal length. But these two lenses get asked the most about when it comes to portraits. Which one should I get for better background blur? So I thought I would bring it in the review for you guys. Here it is at 1.4. Obviously, I'm much closer. You know, the camera and tripod are much closer to duplicate the last clip. Let's do this. Let me set this lens to f2. Let's compare both side by side. And here we go. Side by side comparison f2 ISO 250. You can tell the quality. Both are made. These are both, like I said, upper top tier lenses. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these video clip results. Now take a look at these clips shot outside with a 200 f2. Look how quick the focus is and look how accurate it is. Keep in mind I'm using a Z6 with an FTZ adapter. Well who is this lens for? Okay, portrait shooters, yes. Wedding photographers, 50-50, and here's why. It's heavy. It's not easy to take with you at gigs. I would not take this guy to a wedding. I don't know I, w I don't know how I feel about carrying it in my car the whole day. You know, I would hate for this thing to get stolen, damaged. You're at a gig, you're at a wedding, and there's a lot of people around you, especially at banquet halls. You just never know, and... If, so, if something happens to my 2470 or 7200, sure, you know, I'd be sad for a day if it gets stolen, but I would replace it easily. This guy, even if I had the, the, the funds to replace it the next day, let's see if you could even find one. So I'd not take it to a wedding. Sure, sure, you can use it for wedding photography, no problem, but I would not. I would not recommend it. Now, as far as sports shooters... Sure, all day, every day. You're doing soccer. You're in a field where you're not too far from the action. Uh, indoor sports, indoor basketball, volleyball. Indoor action photography, 200 millimeters at F2. Yes, I would recommend it. Wildlife photographers? I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, with teleconverters, you could turn this thing into... Uh, 300, 400 millimeter easily. If you're shooting with like a D500, this turns into a 300 millimeter focal range. So you have a 302.0 basically. Uh, depending on what you're shooting, with tell like I said, teleconverters, you could turn this thing into a 300, 400 millimeter lens. I don't know. I did a video with the Z50 shooting <laughs> the 200 f2. You you have better options out there, cheaper options out there. I would not recommend this lens. For wildlife. So if you want to spend money and you want to upgrade your camera kit, you want to buy something nice, something to keep, something that has value and delivers really nice images, the 200 F2 is a great option to get. It's going to cost you some money, you know, used if you can find one currently in 2022. They run anywhere from I mean, if you get lucky, you could probably find one for $3,500 US. It can go all the way up to... F I've seen used ones go for $5,000 today. I'm not kidding, guys. 
I've, there's it's a it's you know supply and demand. There's not a lot out there in good condition. Real quickly, guys, before I end the video, the story how I found my copy. I had this lens way back in the day, and I had to sell it. This is when it just came out. I bought it brand new. I paid this. What is that? I don't remember. It was like six thousand dollars, some something like that. And I had to sell it shortly thereafter. And recently, about a I'd say five, six to seven months ago, I found a seller online. He met me. We negotiated, and great condition. The case, the hood, the lens. This thing is mint. I'm telling you, this thing is mint. All right, guys, if you like reviews like this, videos like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel, Vahography. We not only do lens reviews like this, we talk about all things photography and we have fun doing it. So go ahead, subscribe, show me some love, hit the thumbs up button. More videos coming soon. I want to thank you guys for watching the review of the 200 F2 VR2 Mighty Mighty portrait lens and we'll see you on the next video this is vahography i'm vahagen your rock and roll photographer the 200 millimeter ultimate portrait lens rock and roll look at this thing i just can't i can't get enough looking at it look at this thing i never get tired of just staring at this beautiful piece of glass is that beautiful or is that beautiful, guys? Oh, man. <sighs> Let's go. Let's just go. <laughs> hey, what's good, guys? Vahagan here from Vahography. If you like more photography, rock, and content like this one, go ahead and check out the videos on the screen and subscribe to this channel for more exclusive content. Rock and roll.